Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. We're making a cattle drive. Uh, <clears throat> we're coming from the uh, south and going north up this road. We got, uh, well, we actually had a new one. This morning we got 353 now head. And uh, we left the new mother back with her calf. And uh, we'll catch her up. But there's a whole bunch of them coming at us. Uh, Jan is in front of me. She's blocking. And then we've got uh, my sister and brother-in-law in the in the uh, mule, Kawasaki mule, behind. And we did put a cage on this morning. It's a wire cage in the back of that mule. If something gets really tired. We got a couple young ones back there, a couple of days old, and you know it's hot this morning. It's going to get hotter, and if they get tired, uh, we can always just pick them up and set them in that set them in that cage so with that i need to get going because i'm leading the cattle drive and they're wondering what am i doing like greg you're falling behind in 11's leading this morning usually 160's right in there probably mid 90s but you know there's, they're talking about a cold front coming in tomorrow and uh, it's supposed to be like in the low 60s man I love the sound of that that, that almost sounds like fall fall season to me uh, 40s 40s at night and 60s in the day <laughs> I could use that after seeing the mid 90s and you know, we're looking at the forecast this week. There is a like 30, 40, 50. I think tomorrow's a 90% chance we're going to get some moisture. So we're hoping we do. We're dry. We could use the rain. You know, us, uh, us folks on the grazing bin, or any farmer for that matter, when it's fall, you're approaching uh, winter. You like to see moisture so you can grow a lot of good succulent forage and uh, we're we're positioned to do that we just got to get the ring come on girls that uh, road is just packed full of cattle we did this drive uh, oh, this a couple years ago we we did it on a Tuesday, I just couldn't help it. We normally don't like to do it on Tuesdays because that's trash, the trash truck comes by. But we did that morning and the trash truck, sure enough, we got the whole mob on the road and they fell in behind us. And they were two city guys, they weren't used to the country ways. Anyway though, they followed that mob all the way down that road in that trash truck. Big old loud thing. And they. Uh, Finally got down there, we went into the pasture. Their eyes were kind of big, like, Joel has some cows to get out? I'm like, yeah, kind of. We just, we're just kind of moving them. Oh, it's all right, it's all right, we're all good. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 he said, we enjoyed it. following them cows. Said, we hadn't seen nothing like that before. So, even though we blocked them, it kind of made their day. And, we probably put them behind by maybe 10 or 15 minutes that morning. They didn't complain. They were like, it's all good. And uh, if they hadn't been in such a darn hurry, I'd have ran home and got them a package of hamburger. But they, they were ready to go. They were rocking and rolling. And I think they were wanting to catch up from what they had been doing, which was just following our cow mom. <laughs> I like it when they walk. It's hot. And when the cows run, 
uh, you end up with, you know, we've got a hundred and, let's see, 108 baby calves back there, or this year's calves. So they're not all babies, but there's 108 calves back there. And, um, you know, if they run, you've got a bunch of little guys there at the very back, and you better hope there's a, a slow cow or two back there with them. Because I've had 30 or 40 turn around and just come running at you, and they run all the way back through you. You can't stop them. And they go all the way back to the, the farm you just came from. And that's when you just throw up your hands like, okay, we, we did something wrong. And I've never had it happen with uh, Isaac and Ben. And that's because they keep those cattle caught up. But if you get somebody back there just kind of high-fiving it and taking it easy and talking and not paying attention, keeping the calves, they keep getting further and further and further behind. And pretty soon they don't have any big animals to follow. And then all heck breaks loose. <laughs> so I tell my guys, I said, look, you can, you can shoot the breeze all you want. Let's do it after the cattle drive. Stay focused. That cow lost her tag. We just tagged all the cows on Wednesday. We must have missed her. There's no way she lost her tag that soon. Yeah, we just tagged them all on Friday. This is, this is Labor Day. It's Monday. Yeah, got the uh, the whole mob coming up the road there. You can kind of see them. The road's just packed full of cattle. I don't see uh, Ben and Isaac yet, but uh, they're back there. And we've got the crate on the on the mule this morning. So if something gets tired, we can load them. Um, normally on a drive like this folks we have a really nice grass bank right here and uh, this is a neighbor of mine he runs cattle the cattle aren't in this pasture but right now but I normally run a wire from that corner post down to the road and all the way down this road because I remember one time we made the drive and it just rained and those cattle got up on that bank and they chewed it up pretty good and I looked at that and I'm like I wouldn't like that, you know, if that was my road frontage. And so I always run a wire on it. Well, this morning it's so dry. We haven't had, like, you know, one rain in a month. Even if they climb up on that bank, which they aren't, they're actually, you see them? They're all getting in that road ditch. But normally they get right up against that fence and go down through there, and they'll pick it grazing a little bit. If there's cows on the other side, they'll moo at the cows. Uh, that guy's got a great big Angus bull, and sometimes our bulls will beller at his bull. We've got several cows in heat this morning, and there was a battery of bulls. There must have been 12 or 14 bulls checking out that cow that was in heat. They were quite interested in her. I love these cattle. They're so darn tame. Uh, you know, Teddy Gentry is the founder of the breed called South Pole. That's what we have. Uh, these are a four-way cross. Red Angus, Hereford, Cinepole, and Barzona. But Teddy paid attention to disposition. And any cow that acted a little bit goofy, he just got rid of them. He didn't care. Didn't care if it was the best cow in the herd, as far as, you know, looks or whatever she had a bad temperament he got rid of her and that took care of a lot of it and occasionally you'll still have one that pops up it's just goofy uh, you know she sticks her head up and acts like you're a bigger uh, you get rid of those I don't like cattle that are high headed and run from you for no reason at all well, look at that calf Ooh. Ooh, that's a nice bull too Man. There are some really, really healthy looking animals in here. Oh, look at that heifer. Man. She looks like a movie star. Oh, 428, you're looking good for winter. Look at that. There's another nice young heifer. Oh, there's a pretty one. I tell you, they're, they're just all slicked off. Um, they're looking really, really... Uh, Good body condition, coming on for winter. 
and uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for cows that have a good body condition. I, I picked out one in here yesterday. I think her number was 88, and uh, she's just a little bit too much leg on her, and you can tell. It. I mean, she just doesn't have the weight on her frame, and uh, she just isn't fleshed over, I call it. You know, she's probably a, a body condition score of four, four and a half. Well, if they're a body condition score of four in September, what do you think they're going to look like in March? you got to get rid of her. So I've marked her down to call. That's the one we'll sell. And uh, you don't want to, whatever her deal is, and most of it I think is her, is her build. That's probably a, a heifer I should have called and never even had her bred. But sometimes they slip through the cracks and uh, you don't get them called before they calve. Here's a cow that's getting close to calving. See that? See how that's bouncing around her vulva there at the back? Now she's still, uh, oh, one, two. I would say she's seven to ten days from calving. But you can see it, it's real fluffy. It's not tight where she pees at right there. Every time she takes a step, it wobbles. So she's, she's gonna be having a calf within the next two weeks. And having found her, I might drive up here next year and get her your tag number. I like keeping track of those because that way when I go out to look for a, you got a new calf, what's your number, honey? 71. I get up here and stop, I'm going to write down 71's phone number. <laughs> 71's tag number. If she doesn't have a phone. Hey, too, you're a fat little girl. Good condition on her. I wish I could figure out a way to put a, 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 pooper, a pooper catch on the back of these cows. You can see the poop I'm leaving on the road. I like to put a lot of poop on my grass, on my farm that I'm going to. You take all that poop on the road, that's, that's a lot of poop. But I haven't figured out yet how to catch the poop. Put a, put a pooper scooper on the back, I guess, I don't know just one of the deals it didn't matter you know if you walked them or if you put them in a trailer and hauled them you're still going to lose a lot of poo so this is a whole lot better than hauling them poked cows are very relaxed they've done this a hundred times not the calves but the older ones and uh they know they're going to greener pastures uh you know that's just that's what they do and they're willing to walk i mean a mile a mile and a half is not anything for a cow to walk. You let one get out where they're not supposed to be going and give them an hour and see how far they go. It's unbelievable. I mean, they can flat cover some country when they want to. Yeah, girl. Boy, you are pretty, pretty, pretty. Man, you're pretty. Got a pretty bull right there in front of you, too. 881. Man, you are a chunk. Yes, you are. That's the size I like, folks. I don't take them 2,000 pound bulls. They just break your cows down and hug up your pastures. 1,200 pound bulls, they'll give you the right size cows and the steers out of those bulls will finish in 24 months instead of 36 months. I think I've said this before, but I'll repeat it. Every day an animal stays on your farm and you're trying to get a steer finished and you got to take him three years. There's another grass animal that could be eating that grass and, and paying you back. And also, every day they're alive on your farm, they can also die. And so you're at risk of that animal just dying from whatever. So get them finished, 24 months, get them off the farm, sell them, let somebody feed their family with that animal and, and start growing another one. You don't want these elephant-sized cows out here. They just absolutely will kill you. Uh, you know, and they got to have grain to make it through the winter with them. They get thin. They don't breed back. Bulls get thin. Those big old grain, grain-fed bulls. I'm speaking from experience because I did it. I did the whole nine yards. I can't believe I did it, but I did. I wasn't any. I didn't know any better. I just did what everybody told me to do. And just darn near went broke. 
Loved the business, but there wasn't any money in it. Not when you're giving all your money to the input folks. It just doesn't make any sense. These are herbivores, folks. They're not grainivores. They're herbivores. They live on stuff in that road ditch right there. You and I could eat until we fall over and die. They can thrive on it. That's what's so cool about herbivores. We need them on the landscape. We need herbivores on the landscape. There they go. They're going up the hill there to Judy Farm. Jan's down there blocking. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. And uh, everyone have a great weekend and a, a great Labor Day holiday. And uh, we'll see you all down the road. And hit that subscribe button on the way out. I'd appreciate it. And the like button. Thank you.